everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our course vlogs. And this time we're out here at another PGA Tour course, Torrey Pines North. Recently renovated in 2017, this Muni track is the little brother to the South Course, but it's just as fun. To be honest, I think it's actually more fun than the South Course. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe down below. I'd love to see you back here week after week. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. We'll see you out there on the first hole. Here we go. The first hole on the north side at Torrey Pines starts off going straight north. This property was used as the driving range for the US Open and you can just barely see on the grass lines there where the old driving range was. They closed down this entire golf course to use the south side for the US Open, but this 18 holes is highly regarded as the better of the two courses. This long par 4, 420 yards, really sets the tone off the first tee. Just one bunker down one side of the fairway and a couple bunkers protecting the green. Remodeled just a few years ago, these greens are bent grass and have very many sections on them. You've got to be in the right place or you're going to have a very slippery putt. A big cut off the tee and right down that ribbon of fairway. A simple sand wedge here into the par 4. Now this was a very early wake up and a long drive for me down from Orange County, but it was always worth it to play this kind of a golf course. Just in the middle of the green with that sand wedge for safety, 25 feet down the very slippery hill to this front hole location, it's a comfy tap in par to start the day and we're on to the toughest hole on the golf course and the start of the toughest three-hole stretch on the PGA Tour. This is called the Undertow. 500 yards of a par four starts us off with all the canyon down the left-hand side ready to gobble up a wary tee shot. If you bail out to the right, there's humps and bumps leaving you an uneven lie in this thick, thick rough out here at Torrey Pines. It's gonna have a slight downhill slope here as the fairway narrows and heading into the green, it's only protected on the left side with that bunker. A lot of the holes here at the north course are somewhat forgiving, allowing you to miss on one side of the other and not having to deal with sand or worse. Was able to get another cut to fade right on down there and this one stayed on the left hand rough line and didn't quite get into the fairway for me. A fluffy lie here for me, I felt like this ball was really going to jump and it sure did. My 160 yard 9 iron went all the way over the green, just on the back edge here, 40 feet down the hill for my next birdie putt, this is not really makeable, we're just trying to get down in two and ensure we make that par. I really enjoy the opportunity to play fantastic courses like this, especially courses that can host the pros and have some tee boxes way, way back there. This course plays almost 7,300 yards from the tips and this 240 yard par three is the most difficult on the entire golf course. Give it all you got with your longest iron or maybe even a fairway wood. For me, it's a full four iron going for the front of the green and chasing it back to this hole location. But I overcooked it as I generally do when I'm trying to hit my irons a little long and I sent it out to the left. There's plenty of space to miss on this course and we're just trying to get up and down here for par. Nearly holing out the chip shot was nice, but ultimately it ran out to 20 feet. Not ideal, it's a tap in bogey and we're on to the last hole of the undertow. The par four fourth hole is the second most difficult hole here on the front nine, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Wrapping all the way around the canyon edge here on the left-hand side, that bunker is gonna play as the central hazard on the entire hole. Make sure you air off to the right-hand side of that sand trap. It's a deep bunker you may not be able to get to the green into. 
Coming into the green, it is slightly elevated from the fairway just a bit. We're heading back up the hill here, so the surface may be blind for you. You're going to have to take just a couple extra yards into the hole location, but you probably will have the wind at your back. What else is at your back is the gorgeous canyon backdrop here of Torrey Pines State Park. Another laced drive for me, playing that cut all day long. We're going to bleed it down into the middle of the fairway, and this one actually went right through the fairway. Not something I expected with that dog leg. I should have taken a little bit more off the dog leg and really challenged that bunker. A full 8 iron here, that's my 175 club, flew on the whole location, and these new greens are rock solid. The balls were not holding their first bounce, taking one of the biggest hops coming into the greens that I've seen on a golf course in a long time. 12 feet here for par, and we just can't make it happen. Two over par on the undertow. All right, it's time to get it back. Here, the first par five of the day. Sitting 525 yards, it's going to play a little bit longer than the yardage all in the second shot. The fairway will play relatively flat off the tee, with those bunkers down the right swallowing up anything blasted down that side. Now the fairway is very, very narrow, as well with the most of the course, and this is heading straight up the hill into the green, a multi-tiered surface, and today we're lucky enough to face a front hole location. Now, coming off back-to-back -back bogeys, I was ready to make something happen on the first gettable hole of the day. Was able to find the green grass. It was a little fluffy, but it was green grass. A smooth four iron here as I had a little bit of a breeze behind me, and man, oh man, I couldn't have hit it any better. 15 feet under the hole for Eagle. Oh. Right across the face of it, man. We ultimately do get one stroke back, even if it was a little bit unfortunate, and we head on down to this sixth hole. This is a very awkward hole off the tee as it's playing up to a slightly blind crest here at the bunker. All you can see is the bunker on the left and that mound of rough on the right, and the fairway just disappears. The green will finally appear to you once you leave the tee box and you'll see it floating there on the right hand side and hopefully after a good drive you'll leave yourself a comfortable shore iron or wedge into this very gettable large green, one of the flatter ones on the course. Now another smooth cut off the tee right to the right hand side of that bunker. I had no idea where the green was when I was teeing it up. I had no idea that this was pretty much a dead straight hole. A smooth sand wedge, just like the first hole. This is nearly a carbon copy, landing it on the hole location and bouncing out to the back of the green. Just something I couldn't get used to having to land the ball short of these holes. These close putts might just be the story of the day, but it's all right. We're heading on to a drivable par four here, only 320 yards from the tips. It's going to play about 305 to the front edge and just slightly up the hill. There's a large false front in front of this green that can really collect any good drive that is just barely short of it. So I feel like it's definitely something you need to go for. Send it up there and up on top of the plateau if you can. Just avoid the wrong side of this green. Now the theme with the cut continued here off the seventh tee, but unfortunately it was too much. And you're going to see here just how much slope this property really has. This was way up the hill to get it back up to the green, and I hit it too far, and I was on the wrong side. 
just barely getting my ball to creep over the edge of the green here. It almost died on the top of the hill there, but man, it was just perfect speed. Left it here six feet under the hole for a makeable par putt, and that is the type of putt that keeps your round going. They've added a new black tee all the way back here for this eighth hole, and man, it makes it play a brute. 214 yards from the tips all the way down the hill. It's going to play about 210 adjusted down the hill, just a slight adjustment. They got rid of the old pond that was in front of this hole, now just two deep bunkers. Now, the trouble I face coming in from an elevated shot is if I hit the bunkers, the ball sometimes will plug. This here is a fried egg for breakfast that I did not order, and there's nothing I can do but just chop it out all the way over the green, and it's time for a little bit of sloppy golf. Trying to get this up and down for bogey, I left it under the hole as I intended, but it was about 10 feet away. Trying to get this in and salvage the bogey here. I don't like making double, but we're just going to have to swallow that one. A double bogey, but it's all right. It's a par five in front of us, and I love to feast. I was a little heated going into this tee shot, and for those of you who have been around for a while, you're about to see something special. 556 yards, I think this might be the longest hole on the golf course. It is uphill off the tee and slightly downhill back into the green. This bunker here is right at the top of the little crest in the fairway. Make sure you find it though, because if you're on the right side, that rough is so thick underneath those trees and it's an uneven lie. This was the site of the hospitality tents during the US Open because of this flat terrain here and the location next to the parking lot. But this green is no joke. Definitely closed off during the Open to preserve the quality of this green. Man, this is a gem. Now my formula for par fives is very simple. Step one, find the fairway. Step two, make sure your ball is in play while you go for the green. Now I hit that one thin to win, hoping the ball would chase all the way up there, just barely short of the green. So step three, hit it tight. And last but not least, roll in the putt. Subscribe and we'll see you next week.